television show, the show that teaches you how to get results both personally and professionally. I'm Jean Elsler, the Results Queen, and I'm also your host. Today, we are talking to Tracy Fink. She is the executive director, no, you're the director of the Executive Women Forum from Cone Resnick. I've got to make sure we get her title right. So hi, say hi, Tracy. Hi, Jean. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being on the television show today. We're so excited to have you. Now, today we're going to talk about emotional intelligence for leaders. Is that correct, Tracy? Yes, it is. Awesome. So I'm not sure if everyone knows what emotional intelligence is for leaders. So could you give a little definition before we get into the rest of the interview? Sure. So emotional intelligence is a little something that we have inside of us, but it's visible to other people. It's how, we, um, it's how we regulate and recognize our own emotions and how we recognize those in others in order to build relationships. So the components of emotional intelligence are things that we do on a regular basis, including self-awareness and empathy and self-regulation, how we monitor and manage our own emotions at work. Is it something that we can learn or is it something we're just born with? No, actually, not like IQ, which is something that we're born with. EQ, which is a, a way that people talk about emotional intelligence. They talk about it in relation to IQ. Uh, EQ can be learned, can be practiced, can be improved, and can be developed. It's just, um, you know, like everything, we need good role models for that kind of behavior. We need uh, tools. We need instruction. So um, it is, in fact, something that we can develop over time, which is, which is a good thing. So how do we develop EQ? So emotional intelligence is really developed by awareness. It's personal awareness, and it's also social awareness. And those are competencies that most leaders possess. So they have that personal awareness and how they regulate their own emotions. Um, and they also have um, their personal competencies and how they view the world uh, uh, with themselves in it, but these social competencies is how are we developing and managing our relationships, and how do we know uh, the behaviors in others? You know, we get to know people's behaviors by working with them or seeing what pushes their buttons. How can we be aware of that? How can we empathize with them? How can we put ourselves in their place so that we can motivate them or get the results that we need as a leader? So then it's important, is it important for all of us to do our emotional intelligence or is it really important as a leader to do emotional intelligence? Well, the funny thing about emotional intelligence or uh, do you ever, uh, some people who are not necessarily the leader of the group can be the emotional leader of the group. So, okay. which is an interesting um, uh, experience if you've ever been in a room where you can tell somebody's energy level you know like sometimes you walk into a room and you can tell the energy is really tense or lighthearted or um uh, uptight or you know whatever or, or emotional you know if you have emotional intelligence and you're not necessarily the leader there are ways to diffuse the situation that you can make the energy more palatable for others in the room you can start by calming your own self, you know, being aware of your own emotions and how this energy level is affecting you or how you don't let it affect you. You can also engage that person and say, hey, is everything okay? Or how are things going today? Or something innocuous that will just put things on a level playing field. You can also display or, or um, feel some kind of empathy, knowing that what you may know about a person, you can take that on, on yourself in a sense that you um, you understand you're putting yourself in somebody else's place so that allows you to be a little bit more uh, open-hearted and compassionate and I think there's a place for that at work and especially um, when we're dealing with other human beings so I was that your question remind me again what your question was <laughs> I think it was can can it be uh, how do, do leaders need to have this emotional intelligence? Yeah, I mean, I think also leaders do need to have emotional intelligence. Um, an interesting statistic is that emotional intelligence, intelligence is the number one predictor of, prefer, of um, professional success and personal excellence. Wow. Yeah, it's really um, – so I don't know. Do you ever watch The Big Bang Theory? I do. I love The Big Bang Theory. Okay, so you know Sheldon. I love Sheldon. Right. So Sheldon is very bright, has very high IQ, 
but his emotional intelligence is lacking sometimes and he can't always read people and he doesn't understand that social sensitivity and sometimes he gets in trouble with his relationships. But if you notice as you watch through the series that his girlfriend and his friends teach him how to be more empathetic and more um, uh, compassionate, if you will, or just noticing other people's emotions. It's not only about him. And that enables him to be more successful. So I always think of the Big Bang Theory that you can be highly successful uh, in, in a technical realm, but you don't always have that ability of connection when you don't have emotional intelligence. So you said it's the number one predictive predictor of success? professional success you know in terms of advancing your career so then is there like a tool that I could go to to assess my EQ yes there is actually um, there are a, there are several assessments that you can find online I can't think of the names offhand but they can help you assess your own emotional intelligence, the areas where you could use some development and how to, um, you know, some steps to put into place to build on those particular areas. So even if I score low on my emotional intelligence and that, and it's a predictor of my success, I can actually change my EQ so that yes. I can change my success? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can. Yeah, I mean, and I think that, you know, if anybody's ever had a bad review, you know, sometimes the feedback that we get is not necessarily about our technical abilities, but how we relate to others. And so if we do get the right feedback and are given tools and training and um, uh, kindness to help us develop and role modeling, yeah, you can improve. You absolutely can improve. Now, are there some people who say, oh, this EQ stuff is just a bunch of malarkey? It's baloney. You don't really need it. Is that, is, do you get any, run into any people like that? Well, I haven't heard that recently because the scientific evidence supports the effectiveness of, six, of emotional intelligence as it relates to success. So what the studies have shown probably in the last 10 years that the way that we we can actually change the way that we think and therefore our brain, the patterns that our brains use, are, we, we can actually change the way, uh, our, our thought patterns by thinking more um, optimistically or by being more empathetic or by um, having some more self-actualization and self-awareness. Our old habits tend to die off and these new habits caused by new ways of thinking become our neural pathways that are automatically, that become our reaction. That becomes the habit. The old habits kind of die away. So that science is fascinating and it's been replicated in multiple studies. And um, I've seen it myself. I've seen it myself that if I, when I think differently, and that also comes with practice and awareness and uh, this ability to forgive myself when I fall off the wagon and go back to my old habits. When I do think differently, my brain kind of goes that way. And I've seen some really remarkable, positive results from my own career, from my marriage, from my relationship with my children. Um, and all of the relationships, most of the relationships that I have, even in dealing with someone like, a, you know, I was telling the story, I had a, an issue with my car a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the uh, dealer gave me, I had to bring my car in for service and the dealer gave me a loaner. And um, when I, I drove to work, everything was fine. And when I came back, I was driving home and I saw the flat tire light, the sensor went on. So I pulled into a gas station and I uh, got out to put some air in the tire and I noticed there was a bubble in the tire on the loaner. So I, my immediate reaction was freaking out, like how dare they give me a, a loaner and I called roadside assistance and I went, you know, this is unacceptable and blah, blah. And what happened, I swear this is true, but if it didn't happen to me, I would never have believed it, but I almost felt myself lift out of my body and observe this conversation that I was having with this customer service representative who was empathetic and did try to do all the right things. But I, I was listening to myself and I'm thinking, you know what, this is not how I want to be. And I know better now. I have the tools. I can self-regulate. I can manage the emotions. I can empathize 
with this representative who has no control over the situation. And I came back into my body and I basically said, you know what? I need a minute. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm hungry. I have to go to the bathroom. It's been a lot, you know, I wasn't expecting this. And it, it was a very positive interaction after that, but I had to get a hold of myself. And that's what learning this has taught me that A, you can take the pause and regroup and let people know, hey, I'm regrouping right now. And it's okay, you know, I need a minute. You give yourself a little time out. I need a minute to regroup because I feel myself going in a direction I don't want to go, which won't be effective for, for this out, you know, for this interaction. Great story. All right, so then I have to ask this question. Yeah. It sounds like you've been teaching yourself emotional intelligence. How, what has your journey been in terms of emotional intelligence? So my journey started with mindfulness, and I think it's not, you can't talk about emotional intelligence without talking about mindfulness because the two are intricately connected. Mindfulness is paying attention on purpose without judgment. And emotional intelligence is about self-awareness. Um, the two are... It, are really closely tied together. So on my mindfulness journey of practicing um, mindfulness through meditation and, and through noticing and through noticing my thoughts without judgment, I noticed that I was able to have more uh, compassion uh, for myself and compassion for others at work. And that led me to this path of emotional intelligence because empathy is such a critical part of emotional intelligence, and it's also a very critical part of leadership. I don't think that you can be, in my opinion, and I think that um, others would stand by this, you can't be an effective leader if people don't feel cared for. And empathy really allows that component of, of care and concern and regard, and I hear you and I see you. So those are the things that have led me um, on this journey of emotional intelligence because um, I started noticing in myself uh, when I didn't manage my emotions or my behaviors and the, the meditation or the mindfulness practice helped bring me back to a sense of, you know, uh, grounded awareness. Interesting. All right, so you have to say it one more time because you said it too eloquently. Mindfulness is... Paying attention... With on, on purpose, on purpose, without judgment. So it's paying attention on purpose without judgment. So, for example, you know, we we often associate mindfulness with breathing, mm -hmm. and that's because we we have access to our breath all the time, and that can kind of steady us and calm us. But you can mindfully do pretty much anything. So let's say you mindfully walk. Okay, so you're paying attention to how your feet um, feel on the ground, how the um, air feels if you're walking outside, how the air feels on your on your body, how your clothing feels on your skin. But you're paying attention without judgment in that, in that you're not saying, oh, you know, I'm not doing this right or I'm walking too slowly or I, you know, I'm not I'm not walking right. You know, I'm just using that as an example. But that judgment piece where we observe our thoughts, you know, we tend to attach so much judgment instead of just noticing what we're thinking about. So like if we have a situation at work where we fail, you know, we screw up something, you know, if we start to pay attention to that self-talk, it really can be very enlightening as to how we judge ourselves and that I can't believe you screwed up. You're the worst person ever. You're a terrible employee. You're never going to get anywhere. Instead of noticing, okay, I screwed up. Done. That's interesting. Or, you know, my thought, that, that's my thought. That's interesting. I'm noticing my thoughts that I screwed up and I notice the thought I need to talk to my boss, but that's as far as I need to go. When we attach all of those judgments, that's what takes us to that path of, you know, stress and anxiety and, um, you know, not able to manage our emotions, you know, because we go down the spiral and then we get angry and then we get fearful and we get scared and, and all of those judgy kind of um, things that are just 
that don't serve us and often are not true. And I think you and I have talked about this, Jean. Like sometimes we think things and we say to our, we have to stop and say to ourselves, is this true? Would my best friend say this? So yeah, you really helped me with that as well. So I often say the roommate that lives inside your head is always not necessarily nice to you. Yes, but it's our own thoughts because that, you know, it's, we, we let them not be nice to us. Mm-hmm. I like that saying, like, what would your best friend say to you? That's a great way of looking at it. Absolutely. Yeah. So then do you think that mindfulness comes before self-awareness or self-awareness becomes before mindfulness or they both have to come together at the same time? Well, I think a really big component of mindfulness is self is awareness. Okay. And I think with practicing mindfulness, I became much more self-aware. So maybe I started the awareness with maybe my surroundings or, you know, with my job or something that I wanted to pay attention to. But in that time, I really became much more self-aware. And how do I, you know, how do others perceive me? I know what, what face am I putting out there? And is that the face that I really want to show to the public or to my work or to my children? Is that my best, most authentic self? Sometimes it's not. I love that. So, okay. So I'm, I'm working. Okay. And you're my boss and I've got good mindfulness and I've got good emotional intelligence, EQ, and you don't, how do I work with you? And I guess that could be true, whether it's your spouse or your children or, you know, but your coworkers, but let's say you're my boss. How do I manage that? What do I do? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's really, I mean, that's an excellent question. And I get this all the time, especially with people who are in like a hierarchical situation where somebody, you know, is above them. You know, I think it's really important to ground yourself first and be aware of your own emotions and what, you know, what you're feeling and why. And, you know, really going through that process of asking yourself, is this really about me? You know, sometimes we have this you know, these interactions with people and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with us. It could be your boss is, is annoyed about something else. But in terms of managing, um, I know with my own uh, life or relationships, you know, when you can be calm and ask questions that are engaging or uh, seek to understand, and Jean, that's also something that you taught me also about asking questions that we can um, put this back on somebody else without necessarily being defensive or um, confrontational. You know, asking questions to understand is a lot different than accusing someone of being, you know, emotionally unintelligent. But if we can just say, you know, is everything okay? I'm wondering why, you know, why would, you know, why you said that or, whatever the the circumstance is. But I think the the whole key is really staying grounded in yourself and realizing that often things that, you know, this is also this thing with judgment, that somebody might say something to us and we attach a judgment to that thought instead of dealing with the issue at hand. So it could be that it's not, it's not always about us. Do you think men have better emotional intelligence than women or women have a better emotional intelligence than men or it doesn't matter what gender you are? Well, um, here's what I, I know from some of the research, that um, if uh, there was a uh, study done where they looked at the performance of group effectiveness, and there were three um, uh, differentiators in certain groups that led them to be more effective. One was the empathetic component of the team, so how much empathetic energy people had. The second thing was this conversational turn taking. You know, does everybody in the group, did everybody in the group have a chance to speak and to, uh, you know, get their thoughts out, be seen and heard? And the third thing was the proportion of women in the group. So you, the studies, this study particularly has shown that the higher the proportion of females in a group, in, on a team, the more effective the team performed. But I think, you know, women are socialized to be more empathetic. You know, that's just the way, you know, that behavior is rewarded in women. Um, I, I do think that women are, have some intuition, you know, and they are aware of their emotions and, you know, the ability to keep them in check because we are more emotional by, by I don't know, by, gen, by socialization, by science. But I think that what we're seeing in the workplace that, 
it's not male or female anymore in terms of leadership. It's mas historically masculine qualities and feminine qualities. So you can be a man that embodies historically feminine qualities, such as empathy, and that will lead you to a path of success. So then if I'm a leader and I want to increase my EQ, what are some of the things that I should be doing? Well, you know, staying grounded. And I think, you know, I'm a firm believer in, in meditation because it helps stay grounded and it helps practice keeping you um, in check, keeping your emotions in check. I think also paying attention to your body language. So when you start to feel your heart racing, right, <laughs> or your cheeks get hot, or you know your 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 temples start pulsing. Notice them without judgment first. If you can take that pause instead of saying, "I'm freaking out, I'm having a heart attack," or "This is getting me right off," you know, I'm going off the deep end. Just notice how those things feel before we attach any kind of judgment to that. But our bodies do definitely play a big role in um, our emotion, our ability to manage our emotions. So listen to your body, pay attention to what's going on in your body. I also think that being positive and, um, and reflecting that positivity also uh, allows you to be more emotionally intelligent. It's, it's staying on a course that will help you change your thoughts for, for the better. And also we both know the whole thing about fake it till you make it because even if you don't believe it and you smile, you end up starting to feel a little bit better and you actually start believing it and you actually start going down that path of positivity. I also think this whole thing about empathy, you know, we can really practice putting ourselves in somebody else's position. And, you know, you could start with someone who doesn't have such a, an emotional trigger to you, you know, maybe someone who you come in contact with, your dental hygienist or someone who you know but you don't know that well, you know, someone that you see in a store, maybe you just start by asking them, how are you today? How was your weekend? And you can start to feel what it feels like when you are empathetic, when you actually can understand or relate to something that they're going through. I mean, we all are fighting some kind of battle. So it really does. That's, I think that's how we build our emotional intelligence as a leader by just following those few simple things. And the thing is, you know, while it doesn't sound hard, we can all do this. It takes practice. Because we fall off the wagon, you know, we have an outburst, or we're not always so empathetic, or we don't always, you know, we're not always self-aware, because we're humans. What, what we really want to look for is to build that resiliency, so when these things happen, our recovery time is shorter. And, and forgiving ourselves, you know, like that, my story with that roadside assistance. I, I forgave myself. I wasn't happy with that, but I noticed it. I didn't let myself go too far down the path. So I have to ask, when you say grounding, is there certain techniques that we should use for grounding? Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking. I, I do believe that, you know, just taking a deep breath. And you notice, you know, if you ever watch athletes play, you know, before a big pitch, the pitcher will take a deep breath. If you see, you know, Serena Williams before an important serve, she takes a deep breath. And that is what helps us ground, which means, uh, you know, stay in, in, stay in touch with our own bodies, not being so out, out of body. Um, I also think a really great exercise is put your feet on the floor. You know, so often we sit with our legs crossed or we don't always have our feet on the floor. Now I'm putting my feet on the floor. When you notice your feet on the floor and that connection to the earth, you know, you're grounded. You're, you're on the ground. So that really helps. Put your hands on a desk, some kind of contact with something that is sturdier than we are. That's what being grounding, that's what being grounded means. So if I think based on this interview, I'm now realizing that my emotional intelligence is not as high as I want it to be, what would be three things or, or more that I could be doing to increase my emotional intelligence? Well, I think emotional intelligent role models are something that everybody could have. You know, people whose behavior you admire or their leadership style that you admire, you can, you know, reach out to them if it's somebody who you feel close or connected to and say, hey, you know, I like what you do. Can, can we talk about it? I think that, that has helped me. 
Um, I, there's, there are a lot of books you can read. Daniel Goldman, G-O-L-E-M-A-N. He's the father of emotional intelligence. He writes very um, uh, understandable, approachable uh, books. Um, his, his book called Emotional Intelligence, I think, just had its 10th anniversary. So um, I have it. Oh, here it is. Emotional intelligence. I keep it handy. Daniel Goldman. I don't know if you could see it through the. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, but he, um, you know, he talks a lot about the difference. Uh, well, he he, talk, he spends a little bit of time on what happens with your brain, and then he spends a lot more time on how we can really manage our emotions and you know what some of the triggers are, and what to be aware of, and how to build awareness. He does spend some time on mindfulness and and um, breathing. Because, you know, that's what we have available. You know, we can't always say to somebody, excuse me, let me go lay down on the couch and listen to music while I figure out how to deal with you. But we can take a subtle deep breath or, and, and, and then, you know, come back and say, okay, here we, let's, let's talk about this now. That's awesome. All right, so if I wanted to get in touch with you to learn more from you, how do I get in touch with you? How do I contact you? Well, I do post a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, especially about emotional intelligence. I'm really passionate about bringing emotional intelligence and mindfulness into the workplace. I think that um, not only is there a need for it, but there's an acceptance now because of the scientific research that has been um, made available. So connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm at Tracy Fink. Um, you can also email me, email me at Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot Fink, F-I-N-K, at conresnick.com, C-O-H-N-R-E-Z-N-I-C-K. And um, I love to hear from you. I love to talk about it. And, you know, what happens is we find little pockets in our, in our organizations of people who are interested in this. And we kind of are able to build, you know, you start small, and then this person tells so-and-so, and, this person, and then you have a movement. And it really, it's fun. It's great. Awesome. It, do you have any last words of advice for us? You know, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. It takes practice. If you fall off the wagon, begin again. And again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot of falling off and a lot of getting back on. Yeah. Rolling, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. But it makes you a better person at the end of the day and it makes you more successful. And who wouldn't want to be more successful and get better results, right? Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Awesome. So again, if you want to learn more about emotional intelligence in the workplace, you can link up, link up with Tracy Fink through LinkedIn, or you can reach her through her email address, which is, go ahead, Tracy, one more time. Tracy Fink, Tracy.Fink at ConeResnick.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at, I'm at TL Fink, and I do post a lot of emotional intelligence and workplace um, uh, movement things that are happening in the workplace so you are now officially starting on your emotional intelligence journey and i really appreciate you tracy helping us all kick that off um if you have any questions you can certainly reach out to me or you can reach out to our expert today tracy fink who is the director of the executive women's forum at cone resnick with that i'm going to say tracy thank you so much for speaking with us today it's been a great interview well, I really appreciate you, and thank you for giving me this platform to talk, and I really, I, I always love talking to you, so thank you so much. I do too. And thank you to all of our viewers today for watching us on the Get Results television show. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.